Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company and today we're on the farm and I'm gonna talk about my ugly farm. Okay, so it doesn't look great right now and I'm a professional and it still really kind of looks like I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on camera, am I? I don't know, sorry if I'm not. But it doesn't look great right now and it doesn't look great right now because it's hot. I'm hot, I'm tired, everybody who works on the farm, they're all hot and tired. It's been 90 degrees or above for the last like three months. It's just that time of year when things are not looking great. And so let's go look at my ugly farm together and, and you can compare it to how your garden looks. I can give you some tips and tricks on how you can manage the garden through the heat, but I want you to have a realistic view of what your garden looks like at the end of the summer when it's already pumped out tons and tons of produce for you. Now, before I do that, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you're notified anytime we put out a video. So I'm being very vulnerable here, okay? I'm, I'm deviating from the Instagram perfect uh, gardener farm, which we've never had, it doesn't exist, but I am gonna show you what it looks like to have a farm in late August in zone nine or 10, okay? Things are hot, they are tired, it is very difficult for me to water enough this time of year. You can see that our melons really are starting to look pretty poor. We have tons of uh, cucumber beetles that are starting to attack them. I can't stay on top of the weeds. And on top of all of that, it's really hard to even be in the garden after like 10 a.m. right now. So our secret is we wake up at sunrise, we work when it gets too hot, and then we start working in the evening. And then sometimes we work with headlamps on late into the evening, because it's the only way we can do it in this heat. Now, I don't expect you to do that. <laughs> This is my job, so I don't have any choice, and I also love it. I'm saying this so that you know, give yourself a break if you feel guilty because you can't be out in the garden as much as you would like this time of year. It's okay, it is hot. So we're gonna go around, we're gonna look at different patches in the on the farm, and you're just gonna look at my ugly farm and judge me, and that's okay. I'm gonna be real with you on what things look like this time of year. Before I do that, I do wanna mention some of the things that we do use that at least allow us to continue to grow this time of year, even though it's so wicked hot. So one thing that I talk about all the time in all my videos is shade cloth. Shade cloth, shade cloth, shade cloth. I always talk about shade cloth because it is really the saving grace that allows us to plant stuff this late in the season. We've got a plant here that actually I posted a little um, video on and people were guessing and I don't even know if anybody got it right, but if you'd like a second to guess, you can go ahead and guess. Okay, if you guess right, it's bitter melon. So this is a really good crop to grow during the later part of the year because it loves the heat. Just like okra, this plant will do fine if you plant it too late in the season when it's really, really warm. Now, even still, you can see that we protected it with shade cloth because we planted it out you know, on a week where every single day was gonna be above 90 degrees. So, so you re really, really didn't have a choice. We had to protect them. As the days get a little bit cooler, these will just take over and they'll go crazy. Um, but currently, they're protecting them from the excessive heat. So shade cloth is a big one. The other thing is our irrigation. You can actually see that this is really moist. And it's really moist because I'm actually watering every 12 hours. So I'm watering twice a day right now because it is so hot. Now, the soil on this farm is not fabulous. It's a um, lot of sand and it's just really lacking in organic matter. We, we, we could never afford to put as much organic matter in the soil as it really needs. So every year we're trying to add as much as we can and that means that it'll hold more moisture. Well, we're, we're really only on our, our second uh, summer out here on this farm. And so we have many, many years before we get beautiful soil like I have at my other garden. So I'm watering frequently and a lot more than I typically do other parts of the year because it's so stinking hot. So those are the really big key things that I can mention. And the other thing is using mulch. <laughs> mulch, mulch, mulch. I love mulch. You know how I feel about mulch. It's like my favorite thing. It's going to actually keep the evaporation down. So you're actually gonna hold in more moisture into the soil, which is essential, and you're gonna keep the soil temperature down, which is also key when you're growing in this hot weather. So mulch, add tons of compost, use shade cloth, water frequently. That's the only thing you can do this, type of, this time of year to actually keep your garden growing. But let's go look and see what a realistic view of what a garden looks like in August, late August, in zone nine or 10. Whoa, what the f What was it? Was it 
That was a lizard. He must have crawled up here, but he crawled in my armpit. Oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh what the? Ah! <sighs> scared me, it really did scare me. So here's a prime example of what tomatoes look like after they have given their all, all season long. And they're, they're really at the end. They look absolutely terrible. Now these were planted March 15th. We are now in August 19th. So they've given us pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of tomatoes. I think we estimated we got at least 200 pounds of tomatoes off of each one of these rows this year. So we had really good production, um, but they're, they're starting to putter out and they're starting to putter out for lots of different reasons. One, heat stress. They're too hot. It, the weather is just really unagreeable to, to growing. The other thing is pests. You can see right here, we've got some spider mites that are really taking over. As these plants start to decline in their vigor, they can no longer outcompete pests, and pests know that. And they come and they say, look at the weakling, I'm going over there, I'm gonna take over. And, and they do, they pry on the, on the plants that are not doing as good. So everything starts to kind of compound. Take that in conjunction with the days are getting shorter, so growth is a lot slower on your plants. They can't outgrow all the new threats that are happening to them. They also may or may not have exhausted the, the amount of plant food that is in the soil, depending on how new your garden is. I know that there is still plenty of plant food in this row, in, in this field, really to grow longer, but you gotta ask yourself, when is enough enough? I've gotten way too many tomatoes out of, the, out of these rows than I can even handle. It's time to rip these up and get ready for fall planting. I'm not gonna baby these and hold these and keep these in the ground any longer because the amount of work it's gonna take for me to eke out a couple more tomatoes out of these plants is, is really not worth it. Now do keep in mind that just because they look ugly doesn't mean there's not tons of tomatoes or, or plants or uh, edible crops still on them. So these look terrible, but they're still Lots of, of tomatoes to be had, to be harvested, and to be enjoyed on here. But again, this is what your garden's gonna look like in the late part of the year, August, September, when the season is really starting to change and you need to start thinking about cool season crops. So let's go look at another ugly part of my garden. You think I can do it? Ah, not even close. The sun was in my way. Yeah. I'll blame it on that. So here's another ugly part of the farm. So we've got these squash plants here. Now granted these are for seed production. So by no means do you want to let your squash plant get this big. Oh my god, look at this thing. I mean it's huge. Like I could defend myself with this thing if I wanted to. So way too big. But the plants are starting to really look terrible because they've been here since since April. So these have been in the ground for a really long time. They've pumped out so many squash, it's insane. And now we have to go through and harvest the seeds out of them. But it's time to pull them out before they start getting really diseased, before we start seeing a lot of powdery mildew on here. You can see there's some squash beetles, look at those. So the, it's, it's starting to become a vector for plant disease and insects, okay? So it's time for me to pull them out and get ready for planting the next crop. Don't feel bad, they look bad, but they've also given their all. So, I mean, what are you gonna do, right? Let's go look at the corn and some other crops and, and take a look at how they look this time of year as well. So here's my corn patch and it looks equally as ugly. It's turning totally brown. It's really, despite how much I'm watering, it's really starting to dry out because it's going towards the end of the season. It's already given me tons and tons and tons of corn and it's just about done. Actually, let's just take a peek and see. Oh wow, this is the beautiful glass gem corn. So pretty, so shiny. So it's done, this corn has given me its all. It's time for me to harvest it and then pull everything out so I can get ready for cool season crops. Now, the whole reason why I wanted to show you guys this video is because I don't want you to think as a new gardener, especially if you started gardening in the last year or two, that your garden is going to look like what you see on Instagram or what you see on social media. That doesn't really exist for a normal functioning garden. Things are gonna turn brown. Things are not gonna look great all the time and you're gonna get tired and life is gonna get in the way and you're gonna get busy and all these things are gonna factor in. 
to having a garden that doesn't look picture perfect, and it shouldn't. A garden should be a thing that you do because it makes you feel good, it produces really good, healthy, organic produce for your family. It is not something that's meant to be perfect all of the time. Even our farm, which is a very practical farm, it's meant to produce seed for the seed company, doesn't always look great. It is not an Instagram photo. It doesn't have, you know, the cutesy cutesy stuff, although I wish it did. I don't have enough time to do that. But I wanna encourage you to always be in the garden, be improving it, be making it pretty anytime you can, but no, no garden is perfect. And if your garden is lacking a little bit and you feel guilty, don't worry about it. We have a saying on our farm, and it's that next season will be better. Every single year I say next season will be better. No, mat no matter how badly we did this year and how terrible the crop losses were and how ugly something was, next year will be better. Thank you.